Emir. Kotak Mutual Fund presents Investmenter in association with Network 18. Hello and welcome to the curtain raiser episode of Kotak Mutual Fund presents Investmentor an investor education initiative by Kotak Mahindra Mutual Fund in association with Network 18 This Investmentor series is for anyone and everyone who wants to look at building their personal wealth in a planned and systematic way Over the coming few weeks Investmentor will cover all aspects of investing how to begin the basic concepts that you must know be it the debt or the equity market the choice of products and even the choice of a financial advisor the aim is to enlighten our viewers helping them meet their financial goals to discuss this i have with me lata who's uh, of course my co-host on the show and in a bit we'll be in conversation with nilesha of kotak mutual fund lata oh absolutely if anyone wants to learn uh, the basics of investment uh, i think uh, nilesha is the best person i have myself learned the ropes from him uh, we go back a long way Nilesh thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh well first up actually we are starting this invest mentor series at a very interesting time uh, we have just put behind a year when the market saw rock bottom with nifty at 7500 and then you know doubling to 15000 in record time. Uh what's your sense do you think Uh, you need better skills now and therefore these skills are best left to an expert and shouldn't be done on one's own so there is never a better time to learn if you stop learning you stop growing in the financial matter lata we have witnessed that despite lots of attempts over the last two, two and a half three decades the financial inclusion the financial education still continues to remain poor especially in middle to bottom end of the pyramid we did a study where we found that more than 100000 crore was lost by probably semi urban and rural people in various collective investment schemes and which is where whether index is at 7500 or 15000 it is important to spread right financial knowledge nilesh uh, what we have witnessed in uh, 2020 probably because people are working from home is that there are ever more people who want to do it on their own what is your advice to them so if you have dedication time knowledge then certainly doing on your own is good for you but if you don't have time knowledge or dedication then it is far better to leave that job to the professional what has happened lata in the past that people chase momentum they think that making money is very easy based on a bull market and then they end up coming into bear market people end up using leverage via futures and options and then they end up suffering heavily when price goes against them to this set of investors professionals will be far more better nilesh great to talk to you and uh, start off this series now, my question is simple we are also having this conversation at an interesting time when the market has entered what seems to be a brand new uh, breathless bull run now i don't know if you agree with that view or not Uh, but it will confuse people even more because if you hold on to traditional ideas of valuation price to earnings maybe you'll miss the upside and then you also wonder whether this is excessive so what would you tell retail investors at this point my request to retail investors is very simple do regular investment you know there is a saying which says that small drops of water make an ocean in financial world it is most important the second thing is to be a long term investor there is a saying that you can't grow a mango without 12 years of wait same thing is true for investment world in some sense investment world is like birbal ki khichdi it takes time to cook and the third thing is disciplined asset allocation majority of return comes when you allocate your wealth appropriately across a set class rather than trying to invest in the best performing asset class this three aspects of regular investment 
disciplined asset allocation and long term investment is critical for retail investor well actually nilesh why don't we start there what what are the first lessons in asset asset allocation that uh, a youngster should know you know before we know it uh, we uh, when we get our first salary we have already put some money in epf and stuff like that which are basically debt instruments or maybe you know your parent tells you to put money in ppf uh, what should be the first lesson in asset allocation that you would want to give a fresh investor you need to divide your portfolio across real estate commodities currencies equities and fixed income if you go towards fixed income you will generate probably negative real return lower return than inflation and not grow your wealth as much as you should if you go towards high risk assets like equity and real estate you may end up generating much higher return but if you come to the volatility in between you end up losing the upside and suffer the downside so the key is to create a balanced portfolio across various asset classes just like you create balanced diet for your physical health i remember one of the first lesson you told me is that your investment in equity should be 100 minus your age uh, is that still the way to go Uh, go through can you explain to people who are listening so definitely let up 100 minus your age gives allocation towards risk asset which includes equity obviously persons are not alike within the same age bracket one could be conservative average or aggressive one's objective could be different but this thumb rule towards risk allocation does signify that as you become older your risk appetite might be coming down and you need to make adjustments according to that it's as simple as when you are on a plain highway you can run at a faster speed but when you enter a ghat area you need to slow down on the turns okay and nilesh before we delve a little deeper into both of the markets i mean equity and the rules there and debt and the basic rules there i want to ask you a more basic question you know today uh, it's uh, there's so much noise and there's so much advice and there's so many apps we're in the era of robo advisory then there are distributors who are also advisor there there are independent advisors so for someone who's just beginning their journey what should be the best approach and what are the questions this individual should ask themselves while selecting on an advisory model so essentially when you go to a chemist shop you go with a prescription to buy you just don't go and explain your problem to chemist same way while buying mutual funds or other investment product it is important to go with the prescription and that prescription may, will be from your mutual fund distributor or financial advisor now how, if you are moving to a new town how do you select a doctor uh, you go by references you go by his clinics appearances you go by your own experience the same thing is applicable with mutual fund distributor you take references from someone who knew most probably they will be able to lead you to someone good second you go by their approach and their professionalism are they interested in transactional relationship or are they interested in a long term relationship and finally start small and build your experience if you believe that person is servicing well then continue with him so my feeling is that it's important to go into financial product arena with a prescription which suits your risk profile and which meets your investment objective uh, well nilesh while we are on this topic the, uh, let me put forth a problem which perhaps many other investors like me will feel uh, you know while you get confused while choosing companies and that's why you get scared to do it on your own you go to a fund manager even when you look at the number of uh, mutual funds you get confused i mean there are uh, literally hundreds of uh, equity and fixed income products so what would you advise an investor uh, how do they choose between uh, equity funds is it good to trust uh, uh, the mutual fund fund manager himself and therefore go to a balanced or a, you know a balanced advantage fund something that combines equity and debt or is it better to go to a professional advisor and tell him your risk appetite and be advised so if you really want to do it on your own then probably asset allocator fund 
any balance advantage kind of fund will be appropriate where you leave it to fund managers discretion about investing in equity and debt or maybe some other asset class also but this is not custom solution this is like ready made garment there is pre defined size available it fits in great if you don't fit in or if your size changes you will be in trouble when you go to mutual fund distributor you are going to a person who will do tailor made solution if your punch is little higher he will try to hide it by altering the design so you figure out whether you want customized solution or you want generic solution for generic solution balance advantage fund asset allocator fund will be appropriate but mind you as your risk profile changes as your investment objective changes the fund will not be able to alter itself whereas if you go to a mutual fund distributor or financial advisor you will get customized solutions Okay, all right. Got that. That's important advice to keep in mind. We'll take a quick break. Nilesh stays on with us, and then we delve a little deeper. The basic house rules to keep in mind while you're starting your investment journey. We are back in a moment. Gotak Mutual Fund presents Invest Mentor in association with Network 18. Gotak Mutual Fund presents Invest Mentor in association with Network 18. Welcome back you are with us on this first episode the curtain raiser of the investment series and we're in conversation with Nilesha of Kotak Mutual Fund now Nilesh let's start with the equity markets that is first love for a lot of people uh, out there right so tell us since uh, we are in this new normal post covid the way businesses are shaping up the, the way this economic recovery is taken a lot by surprise now here if someone is building a fresh portfolio what are the house rules you need to keep in mind looking at the current context and today's reality so essentially please understand your risk profile if you are conservative investor you are better off in large cap if you are aggressive investor you are better off in small cap or sectoral fund the second thing will be your ability to withstand shock no matter whatever you know uh future envisages there will be uncertainties there will be events which we would not have comprehended and that will create sharp volatility in the market you should not be afraid of volatility in fact you have to leverage it to make it work for you to generate better return during volatile times that temperament is absolutely necessary the third thing for investor to worry about and which will be regret of most fund managers how does fund return and investor return align some of the studies in us in india shows that the investors return in a fund is about 0.5 to 0.7 times fund return this happens primarily because investors end up coming in at a wrong time or probably exiting at a wrong time or doing both it's extremely important to give time to your fund managers to deliver all funds will not deliver similar return they follow different philosophy they have different capitalization they have different style so try to stay with the fund till such time your objective is achieved there have been a significant number of index funds and etfs that have come into the market and uh, uh, it is tempting to believe that you are safe over there what would be your advice to those who are uh, who want to know whether they should look for the alpha of the fund manager or just trust the index so again there is a choice available index funds are like predefined thali you get certain quantity whereas active funds will be made to order kind of things albeit at the choice of chef rather than the customer but if you trust the chef then many a times you know we give order saying that jo aapko acha lage hame de dijiye in my opinion index funds etfs will have a role to play as we have seen globally at the same time there will be certain active fund managers we will continue to add alpha to investors now in indian mutual fund context do remember that most index funds underperform their benchmark index by about a percentage point across various time periods 
This is primarily happening because TRI index globally is compared with gross of expenses return. In India, we compare net of expense return. Constant advice we get that we are on the start of a real estate curve. And then, of course, gold as well has been doing well. Both these are traditional favorites for Indian investors who did not have too much of financial sophistication and products available earlier. What's your advice? Should one invest in these assets or even invest in real estate through the stock market, through mutual funds? So let's talk about gold. I will certainly advise all the women not to do with a corner road uh, jeweler shop a monthly investment scheme. It's quite popular today for ladies to go and deposit on a monthly basis certain amount. And then at the end of 11th month, you know, you get uh, ability mm. to buy a jewelry with certain discount. Now, you know, there is always a goodwin jeweler who can become bankrupt overnight and all your investments will disappear. Please don't go into such kind of investments. There is far better way to accumulate gold via gold ETF uh, or via sovereign gold bonds. The second thing I will advise people, you know, we all have pressure in family to buy gold on occasions. Mm. And some people buy in bulk, some people buy in small denominations, one gram, two gram, five gram. Now, please remember that when you buy gold coins in smaller denomination, you end up paying premium between 15 to 35 percent. If you don't believe me, please go and buy a one gram gold from wherever you want and go and sell it to the jeweler. You will realize what I'm talking about. When you incur this kind of transaction cost, it is hugely expensive. You don't get break even even after three and four years in gold at that smaller denomination. Please do e SIP in gold ETF. The entry cost in gold ETF is far, far lower than buying small denomination gold coins. Gold is an important asset class. One should invest in gold. The most preferred option is sovereign gold bonds where you get interest income. The second best option will be gold ETFs. And third option then could be physical gold. Albeit try to buy in higher denomination rather than smaller denomination so that your cost or entry cost is reduced. In terms of real estate, mutual fund industry has a long way to go and launch really compatible products to real estate. I hope at some point of time we will be able to develop those products. But as of today, you can take exposure via debt mutual funds, which have invested into real estate investment trust and investment trust, or you can take it via equity, which will give you exposure to real estate and home improvement sector. Mm. But we really today don't have a product which can give you exposure to real estate, like physical buying of real estate. So finally, as we are winding down on this first episode of the series, Nilesh, you tell us, I mean, what was the thought process behind Investmentor? What is it that, that you and your team are looking to achieve? I know we'll have lots of conversations on equity, on debt over the coming weeks. So this is our way to light a candle in the darkness. When I look at my journey of 25 years in financial market, I feel happy that mutual fund industry now has more about 2.5 crore unique customers about nine odd crore folios. But when I look at the potential, uh, I feel we have barely scratched the surface. This is our way to improve financial knowledge among your viewers, reach out to as many people as possible and give them true financial empowerment through wisdom and knowledge. Okay, that we always have got from you. Thank you very much, Nilesha, for joining us uh, in the maiden uh, episode of the Invest Mentor series. Uh, with your comparisons and your metaphors to food, you have made us uh, hungry for more in terms of investment ideas. You've given us excellent food for thought and we look forward uh, to your insights. In the forthcoming uh, episodes of Invest Mentor series, we are going to get many more rich ideas from the likes of Nilesha on how you can make money with your money. Kotak Mutual Fund presents Invest Mentor in association with Network 18. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme related documents carefully. Focus. Ideate. 
Innovate. Enable. 